this is a lesson today. I'm going to attempt to teach. But I've been known to throw in a little preaching while I'm teaching. If I get a little excited, don't be kind of against me. But somebody needs this lesson this morning. Acts 22, starting with verse 3. Go to the back. <laughs> Acts of the Apostles. That's back there, I promise you. You haven't pulled out your Bible. I promise you, it's back there. Acts 22, starting with verse 3. We have to stand on your feet for a reading of the word of God. I need everybody to find it so you won't think I'm making it up. Acts 22, starting with verse 3. Mark it in your Bible. This is going to help you. The Bible reads, I am a Jew born in Tarshish of Sim, but brought up in this city. I, I studied under Gamaliel and was thoroughly trained in the law of our ancestors. I was just as zealous for God as any of you are today. I persecuted the followers of this way to their death, arresting both men and women, and throwing them into prison. As the high priest and all the council can themselves testify. I even obtained letters from them to their associates in Damascus and went there to bring these people as prisoners to Jerusalem to be punished. About noon, as I came near Damascus, suddenly a bright light from heaven flashed around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice say to me, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? I asked. I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting, he replied. My companions saw the light, but they did not understand the voice of him who was speaking to me. What shall I do, Lord? I asked. Get up, the Lord said, and go to Damascus. There you will be told all that you have been assigned to do. My companions led me by the hand into Damascus because the brilliance of the light had blinded me. A man named Ananias came to, me to see me. He, he was a devout observer of the law and highly respected by all the Jews living there. He stood beside me and said, Brother Saul, Receive your sight. And at that very moment, I'm able to see. Then he said, the, the God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will, to see the righteous one, and to hear words from his mouth. You will be his witness to all people of what you have seen and heard. And now what you're waiting for, get up, be baptized, and wash your sins away, calling on his name. When I returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance. And saw the Lord speaking to me, quick, he said, leave Jerusalem immediately because the people here will not accept your testimony about me. Lord, I replied, these people know that I went from synagogue to another, imprisoned and beaten those who believe in you. And when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I was there, giving my approval and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. Then the Lord, said to me, go, I will send you far away to the Gentiles. Just for a moment, I will lift up this thought in our minds, a total transformation. A total transformation. Brother Gerald read Romans 12, 1 and 3, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your whole body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's a total transformation. Can I teach right quick? Paul's doctrine of teaching 
where he presents the body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, and be renewed in the spirit of his mind, and thus outwardly and inwardly. So you got to understand, if the goal in mind is transformation, then it starts with the mind. The, the literal translation, the short definition is to change the form of a matter. So in order to have a transformation, you have to look different. You have to talk different. And in order to look and talk different, you have to think different. And so in Acts 22, Paul gives his personal testimony. He first lays down his credentials. He said, I'm an original Jew, no mixed blood, studied at the feet of one of the greatest Jewish rabbis, and that would be Gamil. He, he was a teacher of the Jewish Sanhedrin Council. Then he, he opened up about his sins, and he becomes transparent to everybody, because everybody knows what he did. He said, I persecuted the Christians both men and women, throwing them in the prison, I could care less about who you were. Mm -hmm. He said, if you don't believe me, ask the high priest and all the council, they were there, they saw me do it. And he said, I, 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 I have this story, but mine is divine intervention. When I was out there doing my dirt, Jesus came to me personally, stopped me in my tracks, blinded me to give me a total transformation. He tells about the moment of his life was changed in, in a blink of an eye. But he said, I still had one problem. The people who knew what I did wasn't going to forgive me. And they wasn't going to believe that I had a total transformation. And it was so bad that Jesus even himself said, quick, get up. Get up out of there. Boy, you're going to be dead if you stay right there because those folks are not going to believe that now you're preaching the gospel. Now, the reason being for that was because it was the church who was going to punish him because he did his dirt in the church. And so now Paul had, had, had an issue because it was not a secret anymore. See, this is no secret. In order for a man to change his life, he must first change his mind. Unfortunately, it works both ways for good and bad. Oh, okay, watch this, the mind, the mind. When, when a man wants to change his mind, he has three options. Mm -hmm. Number one, he tries to do it himself. But mm -hmm. well, we're going to talk about that. Right. The second one is he goes to a psychologist, a therapist, somebody who can help him out. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then the last one, he finally goes to God. So watch this. And, and, and when he goes to God, it's not like he knocks on the door. No, he comes running mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. And with this being said, the psychologists have made numerous strides in this area. They, they really have. They, they've changed the lives of a lot of people on the outside but, but because they reshaped their thinking. Now, it's to the point where basically the psychologists are the leading mind changers out there. But they can't hold a candle to God. Because in order to really transform your life, you need God and God only. Watch this, y'all. On, on the contrary, the church feels like if you just come as you are, this is a fixed position. This, this is a fixed state of being. It doesn't matter who you are. Just come on to church. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, God, let me see. Can I teach this, y'all? I have to do it. I have to do it. Mm -hmm. Here we go with this again. Just come as you are. And then you leave the same. Next Sunday, do it again. Come as you are. And then you leave the same. So it doesn't matter what you are out there. The church will accept you. Just keep coming in as you are. Should nobody say anything to you? Well, that's not biblical. Amen. So let me teach it from this standpoint. I, I, there, there's a chance that, that we're going to see friends and family there. There's a chance that we're going to hear some good words being said and the crowd be jamming too. Just come as you are. Girl, everything is fine. That's not the church. 
Watch this. The church is the one place where you go and you see how far you are away from the one that you should be walking in the footsteps of. And when you leave this church and you're not walking that way, you should be walking with your head down, wondering how am I going to get to that place where I need to be. So when you come in here as you are, you leave a changed person and it starts in your mind. If I tickle your ears, if I just make you feel good, I have not done my job as a preacher of the gospel. So let me see, can I help you? You, you don't have to change my circumstance if you change my mind. Because if I change my mind, I can change my own circumstance. So Paul's story had divine intervention, but that's not common for every man. Every man is not going to see Jesus push them down and shine a bright light in their face. That's not the way it is. That's why he comes back in Romans 12 and he tells us, no, there's a maturation process here. There's a process where, first of all, you have the world, and he says, do not conform to the ways of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That thing takes time, he said. But it starts when you start. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, in, in the Bible, watch this, watch this. It was the prodigal son that taught us what these lessons are in Luke 15. Watch. Now, I don't know how long it took the prodigal son from being in the pig slot to coming back home to his father. I don't know how long it took him. But I do know one thing happened is that he changed his mind. Yeah. The Bible said he came to himself. Yeah. Yeah. Have y'all ever been there? You've been down deep and dirty so long and you've been in a situation. See, in order to come to yourself, you got to be tired of being sick and tired. Yeah, he yeah. was sitting there, slopped everywhere, smelling like folks that he know that he, man, what in the world is going on? I'm better than this because I come from good stock. He came to himself. See, that's why grandmother drug you to church when you were little in hopes that one day when you get out there that she's praying and praying that you will come to yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you can't come to yourself, that means you don't have a self to come to. You better take that child to church. Come you better be now. praying. You better introduce him to Jesus yeah. while he's little so that one day he might come to himself. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there's still some folks out there, I don't care how old you are, it doesn't have an age limit, that you still smell it like pig slop. You need to come to yourself. Okay, watch, 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 watch. Here, here we go, here we go. No, so I'm afraid that if we don't understand the, 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 the fabric that Paul is using to weave together the psychology and the theology, then we will go one extreme to another. Let me see, can I help you here? Paul, he said, it happened to me. He said, I was zealous, just as zealous as you are for God. He said, I was happy. Every time I went to church, I was shouting, laying all on the floor, snotting. He, just, he said, I was zealous yeah. for the Lord. But Paul said, I was just a little bit too religious. <laughs> because I felt like if you don't do what I do, then you're in the wrong place. He, he said, when I came up in church, I started judging other folks who wasn't like me. And it got to the point where he started persecuting folks. Oh, I didn't see you read your Bible. I didn't see you tired. So if you're not like me, he said, I'm going to persecute you. And then there's another extreme. The other extreme is in the world. Well, we said, I don't see why y'all just here running up to that church. Y'all seeing just like we seeing. In other words, church folks are the worst folks. Y'all just doing that for nothing. Giving that pastor all your money. He driving a big car and y'all driving these small cars and catching the bus. Yeah, there's some folks out there who are on the other extreme. But Paul said, that's not the way it is. Watch this. He said, y'all both need Jesus. Okay. Hey, here we go. In the King James Version, the Bible said he gives the gift. Watch this. Without repentance. So what does that mean? Watch this, watch this. He, he, if you have the gift of gab, the gift of sweet talk, folks, okay, Jesus would call it fishers of men. If you have that gift, you can use it one or two ways. Help me preach here. You can either be a pimp or you can be a preacher. Which one are you going to use it for? Because he gives the gift without repentance. Oh, you, you can have another gift. You can have the gift of administration. You know how to put things together. You know how to organize it. You can either be a drug lord 
or you can be an entrepreneur and a CEO of your own company. Which way are you going to use the gift? Because he gives it to you without repentance. Now watch this, watch this. See, there's a lot of men of, of questionable character who have the gift. And we can see that Hitler had the gift. Bin Laden had the gift. Donald Trump has the gift. But it all depends on how you use the gift as to whether you're going to be accepted by God's people. Watch this, watch this, watch this. They both need God. Because when, when I have God, I, I can overcome all the dysfunctions of my life. This is why Paul backed it up with scripture and said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why do you need strength? Because I'm weak. Yeah. And I'm going through things in this life. And when I'm yeah. going through and y'all talking about me, I can continue to go through because I have the word of God so intense inside of me that nothing you say about me will hinder me to keep me from going forward. All right, oh, somebody say, teach young man, teach you. Yeah, yeah, I believe I will. Watch this. this so, so, so when I look at the scriptures, I'm so tired of people saying that you can wear what you want to wear. You can be who you want to be because you can just go to church as you are. Silly rabbit, that's not what the Bible says. Can, can I teach y'all real quick? Yes, sir. It's not talking about your clothes. Yeah. God can care less about your clothes. He's talking about your relationship. Yeah. Okay, here, here we go. So, so these and, and other scriptures, they have to have clear in, implications. Watch this. Even though we are sinners, God still loves us. He still wants us to come and walk in his ways. Yeah. And the problem is, some of us feel like since we're still involved into sin, uh -huh. that we cannot come up in this place and still be accepted. Right, right. Okay. Right. That's why some of us come in here, we be quiet. We never say anything. Oh, you can sing, you can sing, you can sing, but we'll never know it. Because you're so sin rotten that, that you don't feel like you should be able to stand up here and sing. Oh, you can preach, but you'll never tell me. Because you can preach at home, but because of what you've been into, you feel like your gift has been dysfunctional now because of what you've been through. Yeah. Watch this, watch this. So God, he, 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 he puts together this thing called psychology in theology. And he has a glue to make it come together called Christ. So let's see this. So the Bible, it, it touches our psychology. He said, in order to change, you have to change your mind. Mm -hmm. See, everybody has a mind. This, this is a, a common way of dealing with things. Everybody has a mind. In order to change, you must change your mind about something. See, Grandma will tell you like this. Oh, she ain't going to leave him until she get tired of him. <laughs> He can beat upside her head all day. She gonna keep going back. But one day she don't get tired of it. Come here, fellas. There's a thin line between love and hate. Oh, that songwriter said, yeah, one day she can keep being tired. She might have something inside that will really hurt you one day. So you don't know what's going on in her mind yeah. because right now you hit her one more time and it's on. All these hot breeze gonna go over your head. But if her mind is not made up, She's going to continue to go through the cycle. Right. Watch this, watch this. So anytime I'm forced to do, to do this, watch this, I must first do self-examination. Everybody say self-examination. Self okay, I, I, you have to open up your mind so that you can be inspected. Oh, that's a vulnerable place. It's a vulnerable place to lay down on the couch and, and tell somebody exactly what's really bothering you because you got to get out all the dirt. Can I go there with y'all? See, because see, up in here, you look real good. But when you lay down on that couch, you got to tell them, oh, yeah. oh, well, God, I'm jealous of folks. Mm -hmm. I'm really envious of folks, but I feel like I, I deserve it more than they do. See, you got to get out your gut. See, see, Jesus can handle all that stuff, but as long as you keep front and talking about, I'm fine, you're going to keep deteriorating on the inside because the more people get, the harder you feel. Mm -hmm. And the more they love, the meaner you get. Because you're just suffering in silence. So you got to get to the point where you get the self introspect God, here I am. I lay it all down on the altar. You know why I'm crying. You know everything that's going on inside of me. I do self introspection. The problem with us is that we like to look at other folks and inspect them. 
This is not the time. You will never change looking at somebody else, trying to figure out what's wrong with them, why they shouldn't be doing what they're doing. That, that will slow you down and even back you up. But at the time you put yourself on the line, open up, now God can use you to totally transform your life. Watch this. Here we go. Here we go. It, 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 it is not enough to just read the Bible. No, and, and when you read the Bible, the Bible, the pages, they're there, the words are there. See, those words have to come off of the pages, get into your system, and you have to start walking the thing that you've been reading about. Okay, here we, here we go, here we go. And, and when it gets into my mind, watch that it makes me change my behavior. Yeah. Okay, come, 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 come here, James. James said, be ye doers of the word and not just hearers. He said, because when you just hear it, you deceive yourself. You're going on, you done read every scripture up and down, but we can't tell it by your actions. Right. So, so James, he, he says, it, it, it's, a, it's the word that controls the body. Right. So that word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. So once the word gets inside of me, watch this, I can do things that I've never done before. And watch this, here, here we go. And it doesn't matter where I am. I can be on my sick bed. I can be in the penitentiary. I can be out there on the street homeless. I can be doing drugs and dope. It doesn't matter. Once that word get into my mind, watch me start to change. Watch this, watch this. Here we go, here we go. Every now and then, you have to do the Michael Jackson gospel. The man in the mirror. You got to look at yourself. Get your eyes off other folks and understand that I need to change. If everything around you is getting on your nerve, if every person that comes in contact with you is getting on your nerve and you can't stand, guess who's the common denominator? That would be you. You need to change your mind about situations because maybe God is calling you to minister to those situations and he's not going to change it until you change yourself. Watch it. Here we go. So, so I reflect. Okay? I, after I reflect, I must be willing to open up to God, come in, and have him change my thoughts and my habits. So if I'm hearing the word of God, but God does not change me, that means I have not opened up. So here we go. The word of God cuts because it's sharp than any two-edged sword. That means what I'm reading, watch this, I'm guilty of. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, that's, that includes the pastor. I can read some stuff and say, oh, my Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I've been doing this the whole time. And it just cuts you up and down. Watch this, watch this. Because right is right mm -hmm. and wrong is wrong. Mm -hmm. Don't you come up in here thinking that, watch this, the Lord's going to just accept me as I am. Mm -hmm. no, that, that's not what we're talking about. You, you don't come up in there and say, okay, I'm a drug dealer. Just accept me as I am. Don't, don't get out into my business. So when I leave here, I'm going to do my, you know what I'm going to do. I'm just getting my church on. Okay. <laughs> I got news for y'all. When the word of God cuts you, it, it puts a limitation on all your foolishness. It gives your, your, your foolishness an expiration date. Okay, because now when you're doing it, you're feeling guilty. You have this conscience. You have this thing put it on you. It's called the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah you're out there, but you're not feeling good about it no more. Yeah. You're out there, you know that you don't belong out there. Every drug you sell is going to cut you up and down until you run back yeah. to God's sudden change in hand. Oh, yeah. Watch it, watch it. You, 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 you can't have wrong thinking and do right things. And you can't have right thinking and do wrong things. So you will always have to justify yourself when that happens. And if you're trying to justify yourself, you must hold on to yourself. Even when you fall, you got to pick yourself up. Aren't you tired of trying to do it yourself? Yeah. Watch this. When, when the word of God moves in your life, even though you did what you did, here is the good point. Y'all ready for this? Yeah. God justifies. Yeah. Uh, see, that, that's what makes those other folks out there get real jealous. Yeah. Because they can see that your life is towed up from the flow up, but God is still using you. Oh, yeah. How in the world does that happen? Oh, Stay out of my business. I'm justified. Mm -hmm. 
What, what does that mean? That means I am a child of God and he's going through me in my ups and my downs and my changes and my turnaround. See, you have two types of people. You have worshipers and you have watchers. And both of them come to the church. Yes, and those who yeah. worship can care less about other folk because they're too busy trying to get themselves together. Yeah, yeah. But watchers are looking around to see who's going up and down. And that's just sure remind you when you go down. They're going to get your phone calls and text you, girl, how you doing? But as soon as you tell them that you're on the way up, delete, your number is out of their phone. Yeah. Watch it. Yeah. Uh, so there's several ways to learn it, okay? And then a man follows this pattern to revelations. Can I teach you right quick? A man, he learns by hearing, seeing, and doing. That, that's the maturation process. Watch this. Oftentimes, when we hire new people, we ask them a question, how, how do you like to be trained? And it seems like everyone else say, I'm hands on. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and here's the problem, okay? Uh, and when you're dealing with a total transformation, you want as little hands on as possible. Okay, well, what does that mean? That means sometimes I, I want to learn by just seeing it. See, when I, when I saw Nene and Pookie and Ray Ray and them get in trouble, I just want to see it. I don't want to have to go through it. Just, yeah, yeah. just let me see it. See, when I heard Big Dave went to the pen and all that, and I know what he was doing, and I was doing the same thing, so I just want to hear it. I, I don't want to be involved in it. That's right. But every now and then, I got to go through it because Grandma would say like this, you didn't believe fat me was crazy, did you? So you had to go and do it and try it, and now I'm on the other side trying to work my way out. Yeah. You don't want to go through hands-on because hands-on has a, a way of changing the course of your life. You would have been this, but now you got to go through it on the other side. And other yeah. folks are not going to believe that you've been transformed, so now you've made it hard on yourself because you wouldn't listen yeah, yeah, when yeah. you were little. Yeah. Okay, here, here we go, here we go. I know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. So, but, but, but God said, sure, I'll show you the way. Okay? He said, I will show you, watch this, that all things work together. Now, the problem with all things is that you don't want to just go through it all. Is anybody, is anybody that crazy? It's just, I'm going to do all things so I know everything that, no, that's not the way it works. Please don't try to go do all things. You'll end up in a penitentiary. You'll end up paralyzed somewhere because you're doing all things. And I'm telling you, they have consequences for all things. God said, but all things work together. That means when you're in this maturation process, when you're coming toward me, even though you slipped and fell and I'll pick you back up, I'm going to use that too because that's going to be a testimony for somebody else. You yeah. just keep on going through, I'm going to use that too because you're going to be able to tell somebody how to get up out of that. See, that's all things. All things are not for you. It's yeah. for somebody that's watching you. Your grandson is watching you. Your granddaughter is watching you. Your son, your daughter, they're watching you. All work together. Yeah. Watch this, watch this. Paul reminds us that these bad things will not go away. God, what does that mean? Y'all stay with me, please. It, it, it's when I would do good that evil steps in my way. That here's the problem. We're talking about Pastor Paul. We're talking about the one who, who wrote most of the New Testament. And so he's still going through, he said. He said, even though y'all uplifting and praising me and preaching about me, he said, all things, he said, watch this, every time I want to do good, evil steps in my way. That means it's not going to go away just because you came down and shook the pastor's hand, talking about I'm in church now, girl, everything is fine. No, that's when all things step in your way. Yeah. It's when you would do good. Why is that, pastor? I'll tell you why. Because even though you're holy, even though you're saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, uh -huh. you still know how it feels. Y'all yeah, yeah. <laughs> can play with me all day. I'm sitting up here. I'm going to preach today. You still know how it feels to cut somebody out yeah. when they get on your last turn. Yeah. You still know how it feels to take a little drink. You still know how it feels to smoke a little bit just to get yourself calmed down. You still know how it feels. Even though you say sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, yes. you still have this evil in front of you that you can't get rid of, and you got to make this choice every day. Oh, okay. Me and you yes. still know how the woman looks when she walks by, but you're married now, so you have to look away on purpose. Yes. 
You know what it looks like. Somebody say, preach, young man, preach. preach, preach. Young man, preach. See, there's a decision that you have to make. Just because you're saved and sanctified doesn't mean it goes away. You have to make the decision on purpose. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So I know y'all don't like this kind of preaching, but I'm going to continue. Mm -hmm. So now I'm free to be who I am in Christ. And the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That means I can still be right there in the things that I used to be involved in, and it doesn't grip me like it used to grip me anymore. Watch this, watch this, y'all. So then, because I open myself up for self-reflection, self-examination, I set my mind on being the best person, that I can ever be. So now the theology of a church has to be taken seriously. Because we no longer come to church to just hear the choir and hear the preaching and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So when I leave, my characteristics are challenged. So that means I have to come up in the church like a swap meet. I come up in here, okay, I need some of that right there. The God can have this because that been getting on my nerves the whole time. I'm going to need a little bit of that too. And then when I go to work, I'm going to need this right here because I don't know what's going to get on my nerves when I go to work. So I need this. And then I need this right here. I need some forgiveness because there's some things that happened way in the past that still getting on my nerves. See, that that's what becomes a swap meet when you come to church. And when you leave out of here, watch this, everybody's trying to take it from you. That's why you must hold it in your heart. That's the safest yeah. place to hold it, is in your heart. Yeah. See, mercy and forgiveness and all that, if you have it in your hand, you're going to end up slapping somebody. <laughs> See, I was going to forgive you, but since you said that, wow. you're going to slap the taste out of that mind. But if you're holding it in your heart, when you get ready to slap it, your heart going to pull you back and say, hold it, hold it, hold it. Right. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> now the situation comes that I, I have too much ahead of me to lose. I have too much riding on my shoulders to give it all up. And so I can't afford to go back. I can't afford for this to hold me back. Now I can see what God has in store for me, and I don't want to lose it with some ignorant folks trying to take it away from me. So my past can't hold me back. So watch this. In this stage is where folks start looking at you funny because they see the change. Have you ever been there? Yeah, she was at the club last night. Now she's trying to be in the church house. Who she thinks she is? I know, I know her folks too. So folks, folks who, who, who used to get their kicks out of laughing at you, watch this, and start to get a little serious because they can see you start to get serious now. Yeah. Okay, she's been going to church. It's been about seven, eight months now. And it looked like she's serious. Why? Because she used to wear mini skirts to church. Now I look like the skirts that came down and she's serious about her business because her yeah. actions are starting to change. And it, it, this looks like, I don't think she could be stopped. We done talked about her. We done put it on Facebook. We done did all this stuff. And it seems like she's ignoring us. Yeah. It seems like she's not having the same reaction that she used to have. That's when you're in that transformation I'm process. Watch this, watch this. Then they start to call you, mm -hmm. talk to you, mm -hmm. bother you, mm -hmm. ask probing questions. I didn't know that you stopped working at Walmart. Where are you working at now? <laughs> so, so that man, did y'all try to get, did y'all get mad right now? I seen y'all with some rings on. See, they started to see things are changing right in front of their view. Yeah. And, 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 they, and they really get confused because, watch this, that they can look and see, okay, well, you don't have no new car number. It seems like you're just as happy as you've ever been All before right in your now. life. Something has changed yeah. inside of you. And watch this. This is the time to delete all associations. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not asking you to cuss them out. I'm not asking you to say anything bad about them. I'm just asking you to walk through and ignore them because you know they're talking about you when you walk through. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get a little more real in here. So the reflect has now into my bloodstream. And now I'm starting to change. Watch well, that I changed my attitude, I changed my mind, and I even changed my disposition. What is the disposition, Pastor Jay? Because see, you used to could look at me and tell something was wrong with me. But now when you look at me, you can't tell that I'm broke, busted, and disgusting because I'm always smiling yeah. because I know deep inside of my heart that something good is on the way. And yeah. here's the way my Bible teaches me. I can't wait till I get it to yeah. start celebrating. I got to act like I have it oh. right now. Yeah. 
Okay, let me, can, can I teach you from the Bible? The Bible said, let the sick say that I am well. So while I'm sick, you didn't know it because I was still coming to church, lifting up my hand because I don't declare that I am well. It's called a prophesy. It's not a proper lie. It's a prophesy that I know because the word that hits inside of me, if I keep speaking it, it shall come to pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here, here we go, here we go. I, 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 I feel better about, watch this, Two things. I feel better about my future, and I feel better about my past. Because see, that past used to get on my nerves. Yeah. And there was a time I didn't want to tell you what happened in my past. But now that I'm in Christ, I'm it's a mind. testimony. Yeah. Okay, watch this. I, I feel better about my past because of walking in the future, and I, I want to be a better father. I want to be a better mother. I want to be a better spouse. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better employee. So Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your whole body, not just a little part of it, but of the whole body, which is your reasonable service. Watch this. I, I have accepted the, the doctrine. There's a doctrine of condemnation out there. Did y'all know that? Where every time I see something that used to be like what I was into, I talk down on it. Oh, can I teach y'all? Huh. I, I, I can see you out there. You're doing what I used to do, and I say these silly words. Oh, I can't see how you can do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can, yeah. because you did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the doctrine of condemnation. Every time I see something that against that's against what I believe, I start to condemn it. So Paul said that was my problem. Every time I looked at you, I start to figure out what's wrong with you. Yeah. And then I condemn you for that. Watch this. But it, but but when you have a total transformation. It makes you see things in a different light. I see ministry there. Yeah. I, I was telling them in Sunday school that I, 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 I used to walk out of my church and then I see those cars driving by with the big system, with the rims. And I heard folks say, why can you do that? Just pass through the church like that. And see, I had to be quiet because I used to be one of them. So, yeah, so, so mine immediately went into ministry. God, I don't know what he's going to be. So I'm so glad that nobody can be on me. Because you don't know what that young man or that young woman is going to be. When she had that baby out of wedlock, and then she had another one. Oh, we condemn them, don't we? She's sitting up there with all them kids and ain't got no husband. You did the same thing. It's ministry now. Okay, y'all don't like it, but I'm a preacher. I'm telling you. Come on now. So, Paul said that, that we have this theology and now we're so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. Yeah. Yeah. We can't connect the dots. Yeah. Now that you got a little church in us and you got a Bible that's bigger than that, that little palm pilot that you had, now you want to go around talking about folks. This is no time to talk about folks because it'll distort your maturation process. You got to keep on keeping on when this section comes up. Just because you know a little bit than the average believer, you just keep on keeping on. Watch this, watch this. So now, all things work together because he uses all my experiences and we let people discredit our experiences. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're ashamed of them. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel because every time I go to preach, Somebody's going to say what I used to do. Yeah. Paul said, my business is out there. I can care less what you say. Yeah. I'm going to keep coming to church. And y'all know what I did. Yeah. And you know I know because all of us are family. Y'all all know what I did. But look at me now. Yeah. Keep counting the months. Keep going through everything. Even when you think I slipped and fell and y'all start celebrating on Facebook, guess what? I'm right back up in God's face saying, forgive me and continue on. Here, here we go. Here we go. So I make a total transformation. Why? Because he died. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I hear this? Yeah. I make a total transformation, not because I've been so good. Yeah. Not because I read my Bible every day even though I'm a preacher. Mm -hmm. Not because I stepped on it and all that stuff. <laughs> I make a total transformation, not because of my self-righteousness, mm -hmm. but because he died. See, see, it doesn't mean anything to you, but a cliche when you come up in here, all you're going to say at the end is that he died on Friday. 
and he stayed in the grave all sad. I done heard about it. I could preach the whole son in Irving. And somebody say Irving. Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. You go out just as jacked up as you came in. Because it means nothing to you. But when he had to lift you from a mighty long way, when I get to the end of that sermon, it's not because I'm stepping on it. It's because you feel it now. Yeah. It's all up in your bones. Right, watch this, watch this. Here you go, the Old Testament writer. He said, well, I, I wanted to sit down. He said, I told myself I wasn't going to say nothing no more. I done been through too much. All these Negroes getting on my nerves. I'm not saying another word. They don't like you to help them. I don't like them either. He said, when I went to the land, I was like, fire! Shut up in my bones. I just couldn't leave it alone. Yeah. That's what he said. That's what the word does for you. When you make a total transformation, watch this thing. Even if you want to get out of it, you still can't. Have you ever been there? I don't want to help him no more. But guess what, baby? That's your child. That's your son. I said I wasn't going to help him no more. I wanted to show him tough love. And you end up doing it again and doing it again. Why? Because you have it all inside of you and it won't leave you alone. Yeah, yeah. Watch this, watch this. So you make this total transformation. Even though this blood is leaking out of you every day, sooner or later, it starts to get worse. When you're out there and you're leaking like that, it starts to get worse, especially when he's calling you. Have you ever been there? I know I don't belong up in here. I know I'm just leaking everywhere. Yeah. I can't even enjoy the songs I used to enjoy anymore because I'm thinking about who I really am yeah. and how he's calling me. I'm leaking and I gotta go get this fixed before it gets too bad on me. <laughs> I watch this, watch this. You don't want to get bad on me because you'll find yourself trying to do both of them at the same time. And we call that a hypocrite. Where you appeal out there but your pastor here. Yeah. Those two can't collide. It's called hypocritical behavior. And there's some folks who live in their lives thinking that they can be hypocrites the whole time. No, we're not called to be hypocrites. We're called to be holy and sanctified and we're righteous not because we do good, but because he has declared that we're good. So here we go, here we go. I work at the hospital, everybody know that, right? Manager of operations, the lab. And in the lab, we have a, a, a process called, watch this, hemostasis. It's where the bleeding stops and, and we know how long it should take the bleeding to stop. And so it goes through four stages. If you're writing, please, if you're gonna get it on Facebook or get it on YouTube, please write this down. The first stage is vasoconstriction. That's where all of your blood vessels, your veins, your arteries and capillary start to constrict. And watch this, when you get a cut, your blood vessels in your veins start to try to narrow themselves, to try to cut off the blood supply. But guess what, that's not good enough. You're gonna to continue to bleed, you're gonna to continue to bleed. You know sometimes when you get that paper cut and you didn't feel it, and you look down, where does blood come from? That's because the veins and the blood are trying to narrow themselves, trying to cut it out, but you're still bleeding. Watch this, and then they know they need a little help, okay? Because watch this, whenever you're trying to do it yourself, Oh, you're going to keep going through a cycle. I said I was going to stop cussing. I said I was going to stop drinking. I said I, every time you do I, by and me, you're going to continue to go through that cycle. Oh, I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to lose some weight. You're going to continue to go through that cycle because you need a little help. Now, to get help from the second phase called platelet plug formation. Watch this. So the platelets came to the scene and they aggregate and they form this little sticky substance. But that little sticky substance is temporary until the new skin performs. Watch this, but if you get cut again, it's gonna open right back up. So the platelet plug formation comes in and say, I'm gonna hold this, and as long as don't nobody bother it, we should be fine. But well, here's the problem. The devil is not gonna leave you alone. When he knows that you're trying to do what you do, no, he's gonna come right back in front of you because it's gonna take a fool to pour the spank in your face and you're gonna lose your good job with all your benefits. You can care less, you're gonna go to prison and leave your family by themselves because ain't nobody gonna disrespect me. That's the way the devil does. It's called plate and plug formation. But then there is a third and a fourth stage where there's a bigger cut. 
See, this is a cut that changes the course of your life. See, this is when you get shanked in the back or when you have a car wreck and the doctor say, well, they're bleeding on the outside, but then they're bleeding on the inside. So you need some help from watch this. The veins and the tissues yeah. in order to come together in a common goal called calcium. See, calcium will bring the veins that's on the inside and the tissue that's on the outside together in a common pathway to try to stop this bleeding because the doctor doesn't know until he gets the result from the lab, how much is he bleeding on the inside? Because I can't really tell, because watch this. But I see on the outside, see that's transgressions. I wow. see his behavior, I yeah. see what he's doing, and everybody knows his business, but then you come up in here, you done got your transgressions pretty good, you got your reputation good, but you got on the inside some stuff going on called iniquity. See, nobody can sit there and tell that you're jealous and you yeah. envious of other folks and that you're really hateful and that you're going to talk about folks as soon as you get up out of the church. It's on the inside. So you need some help on the outside and inside. How are we going to bring this together? Well, in the natural body, we deal with calcium, but in the spiritual world, you got to do it with Christ. Somebody say, preach it now. See, Christ has to bring both of those together for a common pathway. Then watch this. Then it plugs it up. It has this, this, this uncommon substance that covers it. And it covers it, watch this, to keep it from being infected. But everybody can see that it's being covered. Yeah. But nobody can get 